good morning so today I am at the Museum of Aviation Robbins Air Force Base Georgia so we're gonna be going through taking a look at what's inside the museum so the entrance into the main building is right behind me um, I'm kind of give you a look around but uh, what is really impressive is take a look at this thing this is a b1b and I mean it sits right here in the front of the building right as you walk in this airplane is absolutely huge uh, not sure if you can see just beyond that there's an a10 over there I think it's a 10 a but uh, I'm gonna try and tell you what it is I'm looking at as I go through this uh, museum now I am a Navy retired guy uh, naval aviation so I'm not really all that up to speed on uh, on the Air Force at least not sub models I know the basic models of the airplanes, um, you know, B1s, A10s, F15s, but you know, I'm an F14 Tomcat guy, so this is going to be interesting to see uh, see this museum, walk around, and uh, hopefully the uh, the dossier here will let me take photos as I go through. <laughs> I'm just making a little video, I'm going to put it on YouTube, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm a Navy uh, retiree, so I wanted to, I don't we know. Two Navy airplanes. Two of them. A 121 and uh -huh. a Neptune bomber. Awesome. But they got Air Force markings on them. We'll They're the ones that are out back. Okay. Yep. yep. I already saw those. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Y'all need. But we have a B-17. You've got to see. I'm gonna go down and take a look at that. Perfect. All right. Thank you, you know sir. What? Take your time. All right. So anyway, there you go. Uh, I, it looks like I've got the nod to go ahead and shoot as much video as I want. So, uh, let's go on in here and uh, see what we got. Alright, head toward the front door. Here we go. Alright, so the first thing that you're greeted with as soon as you walk in the door is this F-15 um, sitting here in this massive uh, rotunda kind of building. They've got uh, photos on the back wall of uh, what it is that they do at Robbins Air Force Base. Uh, they, they do a lot of overhaul maintenance. I know that they uh, they work on the F-15s. Um, now on the wall over there it has a uh, C-141. They don't work on those anymore because they've been retired from service. However, they do uh, the C-17s, the C-5s, the F-15s, and the C-130s, which uh, I've actually worked the C-130s here at Robbins before. Um, and that's why I wanted to come over here and show you this. Uh, that is uh, kind of what I did. Um, the guys up on the wings, on, in that photo anyway, uh, especially the guy in the white suit, you can bet that he's uh, doing some fuel tank work. And uh, yep, that's what I've done in the past. Uh, helped to take the tails off and so anyway, it's pretty amazing when you start taking these airplanes apart and you start seeing everything that you don't normally see. Um, now anyway, so so back to the, uh, the aircraft here in the rotunda. Um, this is an F-15. Uh, okay, so according to the placard, F-15A, uh, this particular aircraft, I, I assume, is uh, probably one of the uh, earlier model A's, um, hence the reason why it's retired, but uh, good quality museum, uh, it still has engines in it, so so that's good. You don't uh, come in here and expect to see an airplane that's in a static configuration. Uh, you you want to see the real thing, I mean that's the whole point of the museum. So um, they've even got uh, the electronic bay open, still got boxes in it, uh, still got what appears to be, and I'm sure it's not active, but uh, what appears to be an active ejection system. Um, the tires are in good shape, it's got ordnance loaded on it. Now one thing you will notice is the ordnance that is loaded on this aircraft, they have blue bands around them. Okay, blue is inert, which means uh, it does not have uh, explosive, it does not have propellants, um, so those are just training uh, missiles. Um, they're designed to simulate having a, uh, 
a real load on the aircraft. Now here's another cool thing is they actually have the lights that light up on this airplane. So, uh, all right, AF-73. So 1973 was when this aircraft uh, was originally manufactured. So yeah, obviously it is a, uh, a very early A model uh, to the best of my knowledge. In fact, they even have the, um, the external exhaust nozzle fins which the later model F-15s do not have that. Um, I don't know if that was a weight saving thing or not. Uh, okay, so most of you know me as Ed's Model Madness. So we can't come to museum without at least getting a couple photos of some really large models. I'm not sure what the scale is on these things, but uh, they're huge. I, I would never be able to display those. Okay, Eagles in the Storm, this is a little display that's set up next to the F-15 and the, uh, the Rotunda. Um, it's a pilot's uh, flight gear. Uh, it, this display is actually talking about the F-15's participation in Desert Storm, it appears, because there's Iran, Iraq, uh, some of the patches, I, I guess those are commands that probably flew the F-15. Some of the uh, the paraphernalia that uh, the pilots probably carried with them. This is a uh, seeker head off of an AIM-9 missile. Uh, and this is the description for that. Um, but again, Ed's model madness. I can always find them. This appears to be a 148 scale F-15. Um, according to the placard behind an F-15C, but a really nice model. I mean, what modeler does not aspire to have their work in a museum? Now, this aircraft has the old style exhaust nozzles on it, so not sure that that's completely accurate, but um, I guess uh, MiG-21 uh, also appears that it might be a 148 scale model. Um, now this is uh, supposed to be uh, depicting a, a similar aircraft that was shot down during the uh, Desert Storm campaign by an F-15. So. Now high overhead in the rotunda we have a biplane. Uh, I believe that might be a Stearman. I'm not absolutely positive. Uh, and next to that is a sailplane. Uh, and I assume that uh, these are types of aircraft that have been used in the past to train uh, aircraft or air, uh, Air Force pilots. Um, okay, yes, uh, that, that was a Stearman. Uh, PT-17 and there's the information on that and then looks like the glider is called a TG-4 so as with most museums they also have a gift shop um, now <laughs> this is the first gift shop that I've seen that has a Civil Air Patrol airplane hanging up but uh, again like I said back to the models uh, this looks like possibly a uh, RC P-40, remote control P-40. Um, now there's a model I'd love to have. And this is probably really a tiny scale. Um, but this is a C-5 Galaxy. Uh, just look at the size of that thing. I mean, huge. Absolutely huge. So, but uh, they have other models, uh, die-cast models. Hey, look at that. They even got some Navy models in here. I guess this place can't be all bad, huh? So, Blue Angels. Uh, that appears to be an F-14 right there. So, B-17, F-16s. Um, model paints. And here's what they got on their shelf. Uh, KC-135A, 
E8, AWAX, JSTAR, C130, AE, C141, Starlifter, C5 Galaxy. I got SR71, Warhawks, C54D, Skymaster, F15E Strike Eagle. I've actually had that kit and built it in the past, which uh, at some point I'll probably do a video on it. Um, they got World War II aircraft, B 52s, C 124s, B 66, F 86 Sabre, well, F 86F, and an F 86D. They got a Super Hornet uh, kit, and I've actually got that kit at the house, uh, which be building that at some point in the future. Well, look at this F4G. Wow. Which most of my models are 148 scale, so. Uh, hey, look at that. Monogram A4F Skyhawk 148 scale. How much do they want for this? Supports. So $20. An out of production kit. Hmm. Well. I just might have to think about that one. Uh, we'll go take a look through the rest of the uh, museum and uh, yeah, I might be dropping $20 for that. Navy hat, um, hats, t-shirts, books. So anyway, more models. And again, like I said, what aspiring modeler does not want to have their models in a museum. I mean, here's a Navy uh, Skyray. FD4 or F4D or uh, I, I don't remember the designation right off the top of my head, but yeah, Navy Skyray, early Navy aircraft. So, really awesome. All right, folks, we got Grant here. He's one of the dossiers out here at the museum, and he's gonna talk to us real quick about one of the model clubs here, so take it away. Okay, well, we have a great exhibit of uh, models up on the third floor. One of just about everything I can think of uh, aviation-wise up there. They're put together by a group of, a uh, modeling group here called the Robert L. Scott Modeling Club. I believe that's their official name. And uh, they, uh, they, they look at details, so they're all from you know, different commands, painted, everything yeah. is, is just perfect. Uh, there's also down at the B-17 that we're restoring several models of the B-17 that, that the local modelers have put together with different configurations and everything, because there are like eight or ten different, uh, different configurations of the B-17. So it's just cool to look at all, all those models, I don't know, hundreds of models upstairs. Well, just well, uh, neat. We're so, definitely so, gonna we're, we're definitely gonna check them out in the video. So uh, thanks for the uh, the information on that. We really appreciate it. And uh, if we ever get monetized on YouTube, I'm gonna have to uh, I guess send you a check. <laughs> hey, great, great. Well, that's, that's super. And, I, and anyone who wants to see aircraft really have a, a, a great uh, great time at a free museum. Come to visit the Museum of Aviation Warren Worlds. We are number one. Awesome. Thanks. Well, okay, number two. Dayton's got to speak, but we're good. Okay, so I've been talking with the dossiers up at the uh, the front rotunda and uh, just, I mean, the stories these guys tell is amazing. Uh, I think I probably spent the last almost hour talking to them, but anyway, uh, moving on with the museum tour. Now, this is just off of the main rotunda on the first floor. This is a, uh, a P-40. Uh, well, let's see exactly what it's a P40N by Curtis. Um, very nice uh, restoration on this aircraft. And what's a P40 without the uh, the shark's mouth on the front of it? I mean, that's that's what really really made the P40 uh, identifiable. Um, 
This is uh, the airplane that they flew in World War II uh, in Burma, I believe it was. Um, but the uh, American Volunteer Group, the AVG, uh, they flew P-40s against the Japanese uh, early in the war. And even though the P-40 was uh, mismatched horribly against the Japanese Zero, um, they actually had very good success uh, holding off the Japanese. And uh, so if you're interested in the history of the AVG, uh, I mean, you could look them up. Um, there's all kind of stories and stuff on the internet about them. But uh, again, this is P-40N, same type of aircraft that they flew over in China, uh, early part of the war. So it looks like uh, Robert Dale Scott, Brigadier General, flew P-40s at one point. So I imagine that, uh, oh, well, yeah, there you go. See, Colonel Scott right on the side of the airplane. So that's the significance of this aircraft being here in this museum. And up above us, who wouldn't want that in their house, hanging in their hobby room? This is an absolutely huge b24 model so okay again uh, this is talking about flying over the the Burma uh, the hump as it was called uh, flying over the Himalayan mountains uh, bringing supplies and fuel and so Flight suits. I think this is actually really cool. So, you see the gouges in the blade. It says those gouges were actually made by bullets from. Uh, attacking aircraft uh, this this actual uh, zero was shot down but T6 Texan trainer. Really nice mural on the wall over here of a P51. It's a little dark, kind of hard to see in here. Nice display case uh, showing us some artifacts that were used uh, in the B24 bombers and the British Lancaster heavy bombers so really cool museum quality displays uh, an old World War II Jeep they called it truck quarter ton 4x4 MP GPW of course uh, you know everybody else calls them Jeeps Willys but uh, yeah really nicely done now sitting here with this North American T6 Texan or the AT6 um, well the Navy called them SNJs uh, there was a couple of minor differences between the Navy versions and the Air Force versions So there's a recording in the background and you could hear that, that familiar propeller um, of the AT-6. Here's another model, an A-26 Havoc. Uh, 
another huge model that I mean again wow who wouldn't want to have that hanging around So we've kind of moved on to the Korean War uh, displays, uh, but again, still in the same building as before that had the Eagle out in the, uh, the main rotunda. Um, in fact, this is called the Eagle Building, by the way. This is an F-84E. Uh, beautiful restoration on this aircraft. Uh, just with the wing take on on one side but on the other side the wing tank is off and it's there underneath the wing so kind of gives you an idea of uh, the capabilities of them being able to uh, remove those those tanks from the aircraft uh, not sure if the tanks were jettisonable in flight but I would imagine that uh, they probably would be or they would at least want them to be so um, and again another uh, period style Jeep uh, this one's painted in Air Force blue um, but just absolutely gorgeous really great display we have uh, some flight gear and I'm assuming that this would uh, be representative of a pilot that flew the F-86. We also have other Air Force memorabilia but here is what really caught my eye. Was these are aircraft that were used in Korea and of course Navy airplanes uh, are in this display cabinet as well as Soviet MiGs, F-86, P-51s, there's the T-6 Texan in the back. And the next display area is this observer aircraft which I know they called them bird dogs uh, so one of the really cool things about this airplane was it used very uh, little runway to take off I mean as small as this plane is it had leading edge slats I mean they, they were fixed they didn't move but it had leading edge slats and it had quite large um, flap area on the wings. So, I mean, it could generate an awful lot of lift in a very short distance. It didn't take a lot of, uh, a lot of speed or a lot of power to get that airplane into the air. Uh, it looks like it was powered by an inline six, horizontally opposed inline six engine Lycoming. Um, but anyway, here's the information on that. And it even talks about the short field takeoff capabilities. So mainly used as an observer aircraft, uh, spotting, um, damage assessment, uh, searching for down pilots, quite a few different uh, roles that they would use that aircraft for. And again, back to uh, more more of the models um, and this guy's actually uh, built all of these P-47s that are in this display now I'm on the second level of the Eagle building 
and this is looking back down to the main entryway, the rotunda. It will be up on the third level soon, taking a look at what's going on up there. So they have an art gallery. Lots of murals on the walls depicting uh, the maintenance that's done here at Robbins Air Force Base. And they even have a really, really, really early, I believe this might be a Wright Flyer glider. Well, let's see, 1896. Nope, not right at all, Chanute. So, surely that's a replica, but uh, who knows? Might be original. Gorgeous painting on the wall here. So they have a display set up for um, the H-60, the Air Force version, actually HH-60G Pavehawk, but uh, talks about combat rescue, some of the equipment that they use. Uh, I know they call that a penetrator, jungle penetrator. They'd lower it down and it could go through the canopy of uh, the tops of trees and whatnot, and uh, they could rescue uh, down pilots if needed. Flight suit and helmet of Colonel Julio Zorro Lopez. Pavehawk model. And that looks like it might actually be a wooden model. Uh, really cool. A lot of detail on a wooden model. Uh, I, I, it amazes me that uh, people are able, able to carve wood in, into that. But anyway, specifications on the Pavehawk. So this is kind of cool. I don't know if you can read it. There's a glare on the sign, but it says C141 Starlifter Nose Art. Now, this is. These are panels that have been taken from actual aircraft. Uh, I assume that these aircraft were uh, out in the boneyard, possibly. Um, but it's just so showing some of the uh, some of the nose art that was on. In fact, yeah, I see AACRO on this one. Um, that's actually uh, some of the coding that they put on them when they're in the boneyard. Uh, and you can see on the bottom of that one, that one's got some black lettering painted on it too. But uh, the aircraft that they came from. So the maintenance crew and the flight crews, I mean, they love their aircraft, you know. Um, these airplanes. take them around the world. Uh, they, they basically put their lives um, in, into, into these aircraft, into the performance of these aircraft, you know. So uh, it, it actually does become something uh, much adored. So this is supposed to be a a, a little bit of a replica of the Great Wall of China. So this is kind of neat that they got this inside the museum. So really great museum. Lots of really interesting things in here. This is General Robert L. Scott, um, and he actually walked the China Wall. Um, he did it at age 72. Amazing. But this is the um, sweatsuit that he uh, he bought in Hong Kong uh, for the walk. 
and uh, the hat was given to him as a gift from the Chinese Air Force General Lei, who accompanied him on on part of that trip. So, awesome artifacts. All right, third floor of the Eagle Building. pretty cool there's my two buddies down there my dossier friends so third level has all the models oh my goodness really take a look at this a6 a6e ea6b ka6d a6a or ea6a a10s cobras jolly greens there's an apache there's an uh, h60 blackhawk F-15s, all different variants, all different loadouts. The YF-15. Kestrels, Harriers. There's a F-20, F-5s. T-38. There's even a Kafir, K-F-I-R. Well, I think they called that the F-21. Yeah. A-4s, S-3s, T-45, A-37s, T-37s, E-2s, F-22, YF-23, Global Hawks, other experimental, uh, there's F-35s. Oh yeah. F-14 Tomcats. The F-74 on this one. F-111s. EF-111. A-7E of VF-72 out of Desert Storm. YF-16, F-16s, never seen an F-16 in person in camouflage like that. Super Hornet, Legacy Hornets, and another Super Hornet. This one in the back, that's an FA-18F, FA-18E, single cockpit, dual cockpit. Same thing with the Legacies. Two single cockpits. Uh, can't tell for sure uh, the models, but they look like this one up front. Okay, RF-18A, F-18A, and then an F-18B in the back. More models. Jolly Greens. This one in the back, they actually have one of those at Fort Campbell. The actual real thing. The AH-66 Cheyenne. Air Force, Navy, uh, flew the same type of helicopters, H-3s or CH-3s. Now one of the really cool things about this display is all of these appear to be 172nd scale. 
And so it gives you the size comparison of some of these aircraft when they're sitting next to each other. Look at this collection of F-101s. Um, you got RFs, you got F-101Bs, uh, just all different variants. You got three different F-105s in here. F-106s, uh, single cockpit in the front, dual cockpit in the back. 737s, a U-2, a C-9. And like I said, look, look again at the, the size difference. They got an Albatross. Uh, so these are some Navy, or excuse me, some Army um, Mohawks. Back to some Air Force Saber Liners. T2s from the Navy. F9. I believe that's a uh, Cougar. Yeah. That's a Cougar with the swept wings. The Panther had the straight wings. E1s. C1s. F80 drone. F4s. F4 is always, always a favorite airplane of mine. There's just something almost sexy about them. I mean, it just it looks like it's going supersonic sitting still. They got Navy F4s in the back. B-58, A-3, Navy, a whale, RA-5, Vigilante. Now these kind of break away from the 172nd scale, but still some really cool models. Some of these are wood, some of these are plastic. a uh, Boeing KB-50 refueling aircraft. F-100. Inboard of that, F-104. F-101 Voodoo. In the back back there, B-66. And an F-105. Again, it appears that all of these are scale correct. B1B, B29 back behind it. There's a, I want to say that's an X1, maybe an X2. F117 Stealth. KC97, Stratotanker. A B-36. Look at the size of that thing. And that's sitting next to a scale comparison of a YF-12 and an SR-71. And that is not a C-46. Um, I'm kind of at a loss for that one. But it looks like it's uh, developed from the C-46. So, more Vietnam birds. A-1 Sky Raiders. Uh, Navy one in the back. Air Force B-66. There's a uh, B-57 Canberra. Another B-66. This looks like an electronics version, yes. EB-66. C-47. There's the uh, an OE-1. Super Sky Master. C-7 Caribou. 
A7D Corsair with Myrtle Beach tail code. I remember uh, my dad was stationed in Myrtle Beach when I was growing up. Used to see those all the time. F-102 single seat in the front. F-102 two-seater rear. F-5s, F-104s, A-4s in the front, F-8s in the back, and that in the back. I actually got a model of one of those at the house. Very rare airplane. A Sky Knight. They only flew them for a few years. OV-10s. More Air Force cameras, utility aircraft. A-26. I'm going to say F-92, maybe 94 is in the back. There's an F-89. So more Navy airplanes, a Cutlass, Sky Ray, Banshees, Cougars, Demon, F-11 in the back, and I don't remember what the designation is on this one right here. I've even got a model kit of it uh, that I haven't built yet. F-100. F-84 is in the back of different uh, models and configurations. You notice the early F-84 had the intake in the nose, one on the back there, and the later models had the intake at the edge of the wing roots. So you can see the development of that airplane. F-86D with the radome in the nose. F-86, uh, well, let's see, they call this an H, so it's a later version. Um, don't really know a whole lot about this one, but uh, apparently that was in service uh, probably for a short amount of time, so it's a tornado, cool. C-47, and this is a Navy version of the B-24 Liberator. is a privateer. Lockheed Electra, Boeing 247 transport, B-25, that's a Hudson in the back. Ah, okay, so this, they've got one of these sitting in a field, but I can't read what it... An AT something. So that's a C-45, that one is. So it's, it's a version of a C-45. But anyway, they've got one of those sitting in the field back behind the museum. I uh, actually got a picture of it earlier, so I'm going to have to look that up. Do a little research, I think. Um, one of the first jets. Air Cobra. Black Widow. P-51s, P-47s, X-1 rocket plane. Uh, there's an S&J, the yellow one in the back. Air Force T-6 in the front. Uh, virtually the same airplane. Yellow T-28 Trojan in the back. F-6 Hellcats, F-8 Bearcats, the Flying Pancake, uh, early jet. Um, F2 Banshee, there's another one of those Sky Knights. And that's kind of what, uh, if I finish building mine, that it'll look like that. Two Corsairs. B17. 
looks like a king cobra. B26 Marauder. It's an early B17. Uh, some other models that uh, very early development. Some of them didn't really make production. This right here looks like it might have been a captured uh, Mitsubishi Zero in American markings. Kind of cool. Another one in the back that looks like it might have been a captured uh, Japanese plane that they did in American markings. And back into World War II for or World War One, excuse me, for some of these. And, and I, I don't know these airplanes very well at all. But so that's the model collection that they got out here. Pretty darn amazing, if you ask me. Okay, so. That pretty much is uh, the tour of the Eagle Building. That's building number one of the Robbins Aviation Museum at Robbins Air Force Base. Uh, right now I'm in the elevator going back down to the ground floor.